It's recording. All right, so ladies, we are looking at, continue to look at the definitions of the Caribbean. And we would have looked at two definitions thus far, uh, the geographical and the geological definition. And so I'm going to ask uh, one student to, what Norman Gervon state about defining the Caribbean? What was his statement about defining the Caribbean? Norman Gervon. Just a recap. He said that the Caribbean has definitional issues in jet. That's what he said. Yes. And then yes. So Gervon said that the Caribbean. Continue. Oh, he also said that the term Caribbean is using different meanings and so far its scope and coverage are concerned. All so right. he was basically but, saying that definitely not, yeah. Yes. All right. So very, very well. So we would have looked at the geographical definition and the geographical definition, what are the two main components of the geographical definition? Area watched by the Caribbean Sea. Yes, that is one. And the next? Using the lines of latitude and longitude, 21 degrees yes. north and 78 degrees west. Very well. So what are some of the uh, limitations of this definition? It excludes popular Caribbean countries like Bahamas, um, um, Turks and Caicos, Guyana, Suriname. ABC Islands, and yeah. Barbados. It would Wait, is it Barbados? ABC Islands. The others are correct, but the ABC Islands, remember the ABC Islands sits directly in the Caribbean Sea. So you are correct. Anyone, anyone else? Sir, it includes countries such as Costa Rica yeah. and Honduras and Nicaragua, which aren't a part of the Caribbean. Yes, that is correct. Uh, next student, uh, geo the geological definition, what, what's the main component of it? Um, areas on the Caribbean plate. Repeat. Countries on the Caribbean plate. Yes, countries that are sitting that on the Caribbean share? plate and what else? So the countries Is that, that Sinclair, share. Sinclair? They also share volcanic features. Yes. And, and says yes. we can tectonic. Yes, you are correct. Uh, so those are some of the main components of the geological definition. What are some of the weaknesses of that definition? Or what we call the limitations. What are some of the limitations of that definition? Sir, there are several countries excluded such as Cuba, Trinidad and Tobago, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Bermuda, Belize, Guyana, and Suriname. It's only All Trinidad right. so that's it's included. Cool. Tobago is included in it. Yes, very well so. All right, ladies. So these are some of the, the, the two main definitions that we have looked at thus far. And the next definition, ladies, is the historical definition. Uh, but before we go into the historical definition, one second, please. Before we go into the historical definition, ladies, there is one person that we're going to look at. We're going to look at chronics. And then I believe everyone would have listened to the song yesterday and answer the question yes sir. yes sir. and so 
And so this song by Chronic is a very important song because it basically his song covers the historical definition of the of the Caribbean. And so I'm going to go through the, some of the same one of the a part of the song. Somebody could read that for me, please. Read what is on the screen, a, a part of his song. Dominic Prince, you can yeah, call it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I was going to read, sir, but okay, go on. Who, who, who does? Go on, yeah. Dominic Prince. Oh, okay, okay. It's Natalia. Read, read. Learn. Any one of you can go ahead. Read, read, read. Go ahead. Lord America. It's not that difficult. All right, let us go ahead, ladies. All right, so the part of his song said, Lord, I'm, Lord America capture people. land, the old Jamaica capture land. A long time them trick the Rasta man, like them. No, no, say, man, a real African. You think me no member King Ferdinand and the thief in Columbus have a golden plan. Mm -hmm. They make a wrong turn and end up in the Caribbean. One genocide killed enough Indian. And so this, this song gives an entire picture of the, the history of the Caribbean. And so one of the first thing I want to ask, based on the work that you would have done, in your own words, describe the term capture land. What does he mean by capture land? Land which was stolen from the Indians by the Europeans. Land that was stolen, yes. Land that was stolen from the India. For me, yes. capture, capture land means, for me, is land that persons assume that it's theirs. Mm -hmm. Worth if they think that it's abandoned. So when it's not populated by a lot of persons or there's not a lot of persons surrounded by it, people tend to assume. So that's why they call it capture because they basically take over what's not in it. And you are also correct. But when we look at the term... Sir, I have right. one too. Yes, you can go ahead. Land that was taken from, the, from indigenous people and mm -hmm. land that is colonized by yeah, non-indigenous people. Yes. So all those answers are correct. No incorrect answer, lady. So in, that is what he mentioned from Capture Land. And one of the reasons he would have, our chronics would have used the term Capture Land is that there's a place in Spanish town in which he's from that is called Capture Land. Anybody in the class from Spanish town or know that area? So I live in Spanish town, but I don't know that area. You know the area behind the bus park? Oh, a lie. For you? Yes, behind the bus park where there it's immediately behind the bus park where you have some informal settlements. The J yes, you know where you're talking. I you know, know all right. So all of that area is considered capture land, right? Because the truth is that it's government land and The truth in this fact, ladies, is that that area is government land, but the people took over the land. And so his song was a, re a rebuttal to people discriminating people who squat on government land. That is one of the aspects of the song, because he's saying, all right, so you have a problem with capture land in people living on capture land are squatting in Jamaica, but the entire world is capture land. 
and he gave a historical, uh, a chronological uh, background or context of lands being captured by great nation up to the very small man capturing land also. All right? Now, the next one, why did chronics refer to America and Jamaica's capital? I think we would have dealt with that, but you can share your view. Why did chronics refer to America and Jamaica's capital? And we would have looked at it. But you can just re rephrase what you have said before. Because um, America was stolen from the Native Americans by the Europeans. Mm -hmm. And Jamaica was stolen from the Indians or the indigenous people who lived here by the Europeans too? Yes. So you are correct. And then in his song, he would have mentioned two, two European powers. Two European powers. Sir, is one Which Spain? Oliver European? Cromwell. Yes. And Oliver Cromwell King. from where? England. I think from England, yes. because, so Oliver Cromwell was the was the person who led the expedition to capture to capture Jamaica from the Spanish. So England is one colonial power. What is the next colonial power that would have he would have mentioned? Spain. 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 The next one would have been Spain. To King Ferdinand. Very well. And then the next ladies is what event led to shipload of Africans coming to paradise? What event? Was it genocide of the indigenous people? And then like England wanted to grow crops to sell to to the England era of different nations. So the, so it's they, very so you are correct. There are two things that would have led to the genocide. One, two things that would have led to a shipload of Africans coming. The Africans would have imported, not the Africans, the Europeans would have gone into production of major, gone into the production of major things like, for example, sugar, coffee, cotton. And the Indians would have died, so they needed a replacement of a, a new labor source. So they would have turned to the Africans, right? And which explains the point that genocide did happen. But not only genocide happened, I want to also reinforce, ladies, that while the majority of the indigenous people would have died today, Indigenous, you still have islands in the Caribbean or on the mainland territories where indigenous people still survive today. So not all the indigenous persons or people would have died. All right. The on that point, what are some of identified the mass genocide in the Caribbean? What are the different? How do we know that there was a mass genocide in the Caribbean? Anyone, how did they go about killing the people, the Europeans, in particular the Spanish? Because they were overworked and underpaid, they died. Overworked? And I wouldn't say paid. underpaid because well, remember they, they were. Yeah, true. But they were overworked and they died of diseases. and Died of diseases, overworked. And some, were sir, and some of them were killed. Some of them, some of them were, were enslaved, correct? Some of them were killed just because. Yeah. They just killed. Yes. Like some of them that. just killed. They killed them just like that. So, yeah. ladies. So, ladies, these are. These are the. Some of the things that he would. That Chronic should have mentioned in his song. I think it was. It's a brilliant song. Anybody agrees with me? Are this a Yes, sir. I agree. Yes, it's a very brilliant, it is an excellent song. Now, when we talk about the historical definition, what this definition means 
is that the Caribbean is an area that experienced European colonization, slavery, indentureship, and plantation system. So that is what it means. So when we define the Caribbean historically, it is saying that any area that experienced European colonization, slavery, indentureship, and plantation system is considered to be part of the Caribbean. Anybody has an issue with this definition? Yes, sir. Why? Yes, go ahead. Sir, because it would include a lot of countries, especially like America, because they were all, they also experienced slavery and indentureship. They would have ex experienced, I would, I, the Americans would not have experienced indentureship well, because in European colonization and slavery. Yes, they would have experienced colonization, slavery, and plantation system. Indentureship was when the British brought in the Indians and the Chinese to work after slavery ended. So we are on the outset, we can see that this definition has issue. This definition has a serious issue because one of the things is that there are other places in the world, not only in the Caribbean, not only America, the United States of America, but countries such as such countries places in africa would have also experienced slavery and indentureship okay and also places in central america would have also experienced would have also experienced slavery and colonization right so the entire what I would say now, the entire world at some point would have experienced European colonization. So the definition has its issues. Now, we need to ask ourselves, which European nations would have ruled the Caribbean? Which European nation would rule the Caribbean? Because that is a very important question to ask. Because by knowing which European countries used rule the Caribbean, we're answering the question, the European countries that would have colonized the Caribbean. Because if we are going to expand on this definition, we need to tell the examiner at Cape that, listen, the historical definition means that any, any area that is colonized, we're calling it colonized, experience slavery, indentureship, or plantation system, right? And so you need to go further to tell them what was colonized or who were the colonizers. So which, what, which European nation ruled the Caribbean? Question, lady. The British England. 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 So, so the British. Spain. Spain. Britain, Britain France, is the British, France, and Holland. Holland, yes. So those are some of the areas, the, the countries that would have ruled the Caribbean. So the Caribbean was ruled by the Spanish, the English, the French, and also the Dutch, who we, who we know is Holland. Now, all these territories would have experienced all the Caribbean territories would have been colonized by one of those territories. Now, if we look at the Western Hemisphere, ladies, we know for sure that all of from North America, Central America, South America, and also in the Caribbean, all of those territories would have been colonized by one European country or another. Now, what is colonization? Because we have been using the term, what is colonization? Anyone? When we talk about colonization, what are we talking about? Sir? Yes? Um, it's when, like, a, like a, a greater nation, like, they establish 
um, control and mm -hmm. in like a different, like in a area which is like inhabited by indigenous people? By indigenous people, you are correct. Anyone else? Very good answer. Or like, yes, go ahead. I would say colonization, well, colonization is when another country takes full political control of, a con of another country and exploits its people as well as its natural resources. Very good. Excellent answer. Two excellent answers, ladies. No. So I can repeat, please, the last one. Should we repeat the last one for her comment, please. Coloni colonization is when a country takes full political control of another country and exploits its people and its natural resources. All right. Good. No, so you're very correct. All of you, both students, very correct with their with your answer. Now, what is colonization? So according to this scholar, German scholar, uh, Osa Hamal, he said that colonization is the process of acquisition of new territory. And so he would have list some features of colonization. He said it is blatant or slight display of military power. So when they when the colonizers come, they actually come with military might to take over. He also noted that in order for a place to be colonized, you must have indigenous people living there. And so if indigenous people is living there, that means that you are going to uproot them. The person the group that is coming to colonize is actually going to uproot those people, the indigenous people. And he said not only that, colonization, or uh, during the process of colonization, there is violent resistance from the indigenous people. The indigenous people never just sit down there and say, all right, take over my land, take over my river, take over my sea, take over everything. No, the indigenous people actually fought back. And they didn't just sit there. They had violent, violent uh, resistance to it. For example, in Haiti, uh, on the island of Hispaniola, or what we consider the part now today that is now Haiti, when Columbus came, he left some men on the island. And as Columbus disappeared or left the island, what the indigenous, the, the Tainos did was that they killed off everybody. They killed all the Spanish. So when Columbus returned and he was, you know, coming to expect to see the, the, the Spanish, the, the Spaniards who he, he would have left there, he realized that everybody died. Also, the Spaniard would have built a fort and a fort is like a military protection. And when Columbus went there, came, the indigenous people would have destroyed the fort that they would have built. So there's example of violent resistance. Also, colonization, the process of colonization involves the use of natives for labor. So they are using the indigenous people to add a mine for gold. They're using the indigenous people to, to plant for domestic purposes. They are using them for almost everything. The next thing with the next point, ladies, about uh, the, the process of colonization is that they are going to be the formation of plantation. They are going to establish, the colonizers are going to establish very large plantations. And plantations are large plots of land that were actually used, large plot of land that were actually used to do some form of cultivation. So you have cultivation, maybe cultivation in cotton, cultivation in sh and cotton, sugar, coffee, some, all of those crops could have been used on a plantation. Uh, the next thing is that part of the colonization process 
involves once the native persons and indigenous people, their population would have declined significantly, they are going to import forced labor. And those forced labor are the Africans that are coming in to replace uh, the indigenous people. And they are going, they are going to have a mass import, importation of labor. In fact, there are over 15 million Africans who would have come to the Caribbean to work on sugar plantations or various different types of plantations. Now, the colonization process also involves, ladies, the importation of other people. So once slavery ended, once slavery ended, we have the importation of other groups of people coming in to fill the gap that this, the enslaved people would have left. And so we have people coming in like the Chinese, the Indians, uh, some Africans also came. And so all of that ladies would have involved what this historian would have called the colonization process. Now, we know for sure that the Caribbean has been colonized and there are some countries in the Caribbean today that still remain a part of the, what you call it now, still remain a part of colonial powers. But there's one question I want to ask, and the syllabus usually asks, and sometimes you can get an essay question, question on this in the exam. Uh, what are the impacts of European colonization on the Caribbean? When we look at the Caribbean, what are some of the influences? Question out for you, ladies. Look outside. Look at yourself. Look at your country. When you drive around Jamaica, what? The culture. The, 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 the culture. The, what about for the instance, culture? For instance, Jamaica still uses the British education system. That is one example. The British education system. What about mm. the British education system that they use? The, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't find the exact words. You know it. The, I know the, uh, a lot what, of if, the, a lot of the, especially the English. They use British English to teach. That's so they, so the, 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 stand, the, the way in which they use, yes, the, use. the language of instruction is the ink standard english which is yes sir, so that is the, one the uniform system we use the uniform in system very good what else you see in the education system that is very colonial you just got your result yesterday oh examinations the examination cxc is modeled of our british, british exam system. yes, yes. And we got a lot of religion. We got a, we have a lot of religion from the colonial past because and they came they came with inf, they came and influenced them to practice Catholics and Christianism. So that's why most of the Caribbean right now are Christians. Not are all, Christi but most. Most. And the Very names well. of. Go ahead. The names of like different places and um, rivers like Rio Cobre and. Ocho Rios, like yeah. the Spaniards, though those are names from the um, the Spaniards gave some parts of Jamaica, and yeah. that's one impact that they had. Very good. What about the names of the parishes? Yes, sir. Saint Catherine, Saint Saint Andrew, Saint Andrew. Yeah. Every Caribbean country have a parish that named Saint Andrew. You know that. Saint. Yes, sir. What what else? Sir, the language. The language. The, so the entire Caribbean is, is divided based on European language. So we have the Frank the Francophone Caribbean, the Hispanophone Caribbean. We also have the Dutch Caribbean or the Anglophone Caribbean. So even the languages of European nations influence the Caribbean are, we, we still see it a part of the Caribbean. Any other influence of Europeans? What about the food? Most of the food is like African. 
Now, yes, we, we have African food, yes, but there are some food that is that is very, very European. And the traditions of cooking that we have is most of it is African. I agree with you, but I want you to point out some of the things that are also the the European. What about Escovy fish? I was, sorry, I was just going to say the style, the different style of food. And the drinking of coffee. You think you're drinking of coffee? No man, they come to the cabin. Anytime. They mean tea. Like, the drinking of tea. Tea. Yes, tea. 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 All right. Anything else? The building structure. The building structure. So when you're going to the cabin, when you go anywhere, look at the, the different schools, the government building, you realize that quite a few our buildings are modeled of European architecture any other impact we have we have what about the rule of law for laws so you know like how in the british have a lot of laws for a lot of minor stuff there well they're minor to them but they're minor to us but major to them jamaica mm -hmm. not just jamaica the caribbean has a lot of laws implemented that we don't even know about but it's mm -hmm. there so we have the our government system and a lot of the laws. I like what you so don't stick up yes. in right there. The they the implement government. the laws and they follow through, but we implement the laws and don't follow through with it. That right. is true. But guess what? Our government what? system is British based. Like we have governors and we have prime ministers. That has a lot to do with colonization. Colonization, parliament, even yes. all the elections. Are also the, co the country being very very British. Also, the country being democratic, demo democratic. Sorry, has a lot to do with colonization. Very well, so so ladies, sir, and, and you were talking ahead. about the law as well, sir. The language in which the law is written, because even some of the fines are written in pences and um, European monies rather than Jamaica dollars. Very well, so very well, so. So ladies, we would have looked quite a lot on the influence of European on the Caribbean, especially when you go, when you're driving to Spanish Town on the Mandela Highway or Portmore, for those of you who live in Portmore, you see all the sugarcane of, of the Mandela. That shows that is a legacy of colonization because it was the, the Europeans who brought sugarcane here. And we still have a lot of sugarcane all over the the landscape is very sugarcane. If you go to Barbados, there is the eastern side of Barbados, I believe, are in the center of Barbados that has quite a lot of sugarcane growing. Now, so ladies, we would have looked at the influence. Now, another point I want to make, ladies, is that although there are similarities between European countries Sir, can in terms just of go back. Sir, just go back to the slide for one second. Just one second. Okay. So the, the, Thank you. Can we move on? Yes. The, the point is, ladies, although there are similarities between European countries when it comes to culture, there are differences in the cultures of Europe, right? And so what we are going to, and we know one of the differences is that there's going to be language. And on some islands, some islands of the Caribbean, we have exchange of political power. So if you come, for example, in Jamaica, a student would have mentioned that we have some Spanish names. That's to show that the island was first colonized by the Spanish. So we have some Spanish names, and the island was then taken over by the British. So we have a British, British name. Grenada is the same. French names, most of the places in Grenada are, they have French names. Mm. The names of the people there, French names. Same thing with St. Lucia. St. Lucia, the British and the French fought over St. Lucia 14 times. So St. Lucia said they are the Ellen of the West. They are very special because you can imagine somebody fight two European nations fighting over you 14 times. The British won several times and the, the, and the French won several times. The last person who won the war was the English. And so in St. Lucia, 
the, 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 the language, the Creole that is spoken in St. Lucia is the French Creole and not an English-based Creole. Cuba, Cuba was colonized by the Spanish and also by the United States. The United States would have occupied Cuba at once. Trinidad, if you're going Trinidad, and even the name Trinidad is a Spanish name. And so Trinidad, Trinidad was colonized for a large part, it was a Spanish country, and then it became an English country. We would have looked at the weaknesses of this definition already, right? The historical definition to say that there are other places in reality, the other places that experience slavery and colonization and the plantation system is not just the Caribbean. So the, the, the definition is very wide. Although a benefit of that definition is that it includes every Caribbean country. That's the benefit. Nobody is excluded from that definition. There is no exclusion from the historical definition because everybody experienced colonization all right the next definition ladies that we're going to look at is the police everybody is signed with the historical definition yes sir good now the next definition is the political definition of the caribbean and so the political definition of the Caribbean argues that the Caribbean has various political, or the Caribbean has various system of governance or governments, and that they are, the Caribbean is divided based on different socio-economic grouping. Ladies, some students find this one, the political definition to be a problem. I'm going to repeat. I do agree with this one. The political definition of the Caribbean argues that the Caribbean has a very diverse political system and that the Caribbean is divided based on socio and economic grouping, meaning that the Caribbean has several different political entities within its space. But that definition is very, very vague. That is my critique of the definition. It's yes, very sir. vague because there are other parts of the world, for example, in Africa, that has a, a quite a lot of, of various different types of political system. Not only the Caribbean, but there are some groupings in the Caribbean that are unique to the Caribbean. And so what are some of the different govern government systems in the Caribbean? One, the Caribbean is made up of independent states. Name some countries that are independent. Cuba, Jamaica, Dominica. Dominican yes. Republic, Grenada, Trinidad, Belize, Bermuda. Um, Bermuda no, you said Bermuda. Bermuda is not. Bermuda okay. is independent. All right. So Bahamas, Antigua and Bahamas. Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All right. Good. Now, this is how I wanted to answer a question like this. If you go into the exam and they ask you to talk about the political definition, you can mention that the, Carib the, the uh, political definition of the Caribbean involves that the Caribbean has several different government systems and socio-economic grouping. One such government system is independent states. Examples of independent states are Jamaica, Cuba, that, 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 that. Then you continue that not only the Caribbean, not only has independent states, but the Caribbean also has colonial dependencies. Name some countries that are still dependent uh, when Puerto it comes. Rico. 
Puerto Rico. Yes, you are correct. Which Cayman other country? Island. The Cayman, Cayman Islands. This other territory. British Virgin Islands. The British Virgin Islands. And beside the British US. Virgin Islands is another Virgin Island. U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Virgin Islands. Very good. Any other? Aruba. Cuba. No, oh, Aruba. Cuba is Aruba. Aruba. Oh, Aruba. Yes, you are correct. Aruba. Any other territory? Wait, we said Turks and Caicos. Turks mm -hmm. and Caicos. We're missing out somebody else. A very important group that they vote in the election. They are a part of. Hmm. They have a seat in the parliament in Europe. Huh? The French islands. Sir, never oh, Guadeloupe. Guadeloupe, Martinique. Saint Martinique. Yes, those territories. You never know that the French. So, in. I hope. No. You wouldn't know that. All right. Sorry. No My bad. You wouldn't know that. All right. So, ladies, so look at this now. So, the Caribbean is made up of independent states, colonial dependencies. We look at some colonial dependencies. I'm going to go deeper into colonial dependencies and also associated states. Right now, in the Caribbean, we don't have associated states. All right. Because Unless you're going to say that Puerto Rico is an associate, associated state. But most of the countries that were once associated states, they are no, they are no independent countries. For example, like St. Vincent, Grenada. Now, what do we mean by like associated states? Associated states, these are states who were dependencies of a European country. Associated states are states who were dependencies of European country, but exercise some level of sovereignty. So meaning they were dependencies, but they had certain powers that they could exercise like an independent country. It's like you are in between, between a dependency and a dependency, a borderline type of uh, Hold on, associated states are states that? Associated states are states that are dependencies of European territories, dependencies of European territories, dependencies of European territories, but also have some powers like a dependent state. Thank you. Good. And then we have, so the Caribbean has these three systems, or three systems of governance, system. In the independent states, colonial dependencies, associated states. Now, this map basically gives you an idea of some of the dependent states and the, 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 the independent and the dependent states in the Caribbean. Now, we would have gone through that. Now, I'm going to talk about countries that are part of another country. Do you know that France is divided into what we call departments. You see, like how we have parish, parishes, our consist constituencies. When you are voting, you vote in a particular geographic space. In France, they have dependencies. So France is divided into dependencies. On your screen now, you are seeing the dependencies of France. All right? So no, dependency or departments. Sorry, my, my bad. Departments departments of France. So France is divided into departments. And this is what the this system is called departmentalism, right? So they are divided into different departments in France. 
So each department has a representative that sits in the, the French parliament. Each department has a political representative that sits in the French parliament. Now, ladies, here I'm showing you where you're looking at a map where you're looking at France. So if you look on the eastern side of the map, you're seeing France up north, France, and then you see the Caribbean. Now in the Caribbean, we have Martinique. We have Martinique, French Guyana, Saint, French Saint Martin, Guadeloupe. These territories in the Caribbean, although they sit in the Caribbean, are they are Caribbean countries, they are considered to be part of France. So the, peop the people that live within these territories of Martinique, French Guyana, Guadeloupe, French Saint Martin, they are, they are French citizens. They carry French passport. If you need to visit Saint Martin, or if you need to visit Martinique, you need to go to the French embassy to get a French visa to visit that country in the Caribbean. They are part of France. They don't have separate elections from France. So when they vote in, a, in, in an in election, they vote for a representative to sit in the French parliament. Their representative sits in the French parliament. Is the first time you are hearing this one, ladies? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, All right. So, yeah, so I, knew, we, I knew that they had friend. I knew that they were take um colonized by the French, but I didn't know that they had to select a representative. I thought that they were they just had mm -hmm. regular leaders. I didn't know that one has to sit in the French um parliament. Yes, they have a representative that sits in the French parliament. Now, the next point, so we finish now with the French. Now we're looking at Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Do you know oh, I'm sure I have that... a Go ahead. So Go what ahead. is their person called? That's the representative? Just I, like I, what you have for representative. Yes, it's the same. I don't know the exact name of the what they are called, but I know that just like we have a representative by MP. Sorry about that. Just like we have an MP, they also have an M like a member of parliament that sits within the French parliament. Okay, sir. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. These territories, we know for sure that they are colonies of the United States. The U.S. don't like people to say that they are colonies, right? They don't like it. The U.S. say that they are protectorates of Puerto Ricans are their protectorates. They are protecting them. However, citizens in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, they are U.S. citizens. They are U.S. citizens and they have U.S. passports, but they do not vote in U.S. federal election. They, they cannot vote in U.S. federal election. So that would be impossible. But, impossible. but they have their own elections. Yes, sir. I'm just saying for the voting process for them would be difficult because in the U.S. you get mm -hmm. a ballot in, in mail and then you send it back. So... I don't know how that would work for them. It would take but they also minutes. have mail-in ballots yeah, where they can it, it could oh, not I know, work out the same I know, way. That, I know that they have it, but I was saying it just so that they can look a while. That's all. No, this is the issue with Puerto Rico. Over the years, some people in the United States is saying, yeah, remember, Hawaii is very far from mainland USA. Agree? Yes, sir are saying why not make Puerto Rico a state of the U.S. Since they are U.S. citizens already, they carry U.S. passports. 
You don't have a Puerto Rican passport. They only have U.S. passport. Why not make them just a state of the U.S.? But there's an issue that is going on. The Democrats in the U.S., they want Puerto Rico to be part of the United States, but the Republican said, no, we don't want them to be part of the U.S. And you remember when Trump asked, said that he was going to deport the Puerto Ricans? Or yes, I mean, yes, and he did, he had no idea that Puerto Rico was actually part of them. Now, ladies, <laughs> we are not. <laughs> yes, I'm going mute your mic. Even when Puerto Rico had um the hurricane, and he said yes. he couldn't get to them because it's an island surrounded by water. Listen, yes. listen. Man, <laughs> This man did not know Trinidad and Tobago was one. Listen. Uh, Trinidad played ladies. in the first half and then the Tobagans played in the second half. half. Of the listen, listen. Joke. <laughs> All right, ladies, just give me three minutes before you go to your next class. All right, the next one. The Caribbean, we know for sure that the Caribbean is divided on based on languages, and we already discussed that. No, the Caribbean is also divided based on modern political groupings. Now, why do we have political groupings in the Caribbean where we group countries, where countries come together? The reason why countries come together and form unions is because one, there's a lot of poverty in the Caribbean, high unemployment, and they, are, they feel like they are bullied by the developed countries. They also want to trade with each other in the Caribbean. You know, increased trade, everybody can make money. For education, so for example, we have CXCs, a form of grouping. And so ladies, if we look at the economic unions in the Caribbean, the Caribbean is divided based on socioeconomic grouping. Examples of these groupings are examples of these groupings are CARICOM. CARICOM is an example of socioeconomic grouping. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States and the Association of Caribbean States. Now, ladies, if you look on your map, you're going to see which countries are part of CARICOM, the countries that are part of the OECS or the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States are the countries that are part of the associated states. What we are saying is that the Caribbean is made up of independent countries, colonial dependencies, associated, associated states, and also dependent countries that are also part of European countries are the United States. And in addition to the political definition is that the Caribbean is part, the Caribbean has socioeconomic groupings. Why they form these groupings? Why countries come together in the Caribbean? Because of poverty, because of I, I, I unemployment, because of all of these different issues. So they come together and they form different unions. What are the three main unions in the Caribbean? CARICOM, which is the Caribbean Community, OECS, and Association of Caribbean States. So ladies, we have gone through the, the political and the historical definition. Any question before you go? Any question, ladies? Sir, not a question, but go back to um the the, the 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 influences of european powers on the caribbean okay no problem all right ladies so we are through for the day see you again tomorrow when we look at the dashboard Okay, bye. This one? Slide out the desk.
Okay. All right. You're through. All right, ladies.